This is the Retrospec Valen Rev Plus. It's a modern take on a classic e moped from a company that's been in the bike game since all the way back in 2009. So, what does 15 years of bike industry experience get you with this kind of e bike in 2024? Take a ride with me and let's chat about it. Hey friends, welcome back. I'm Mike, and today we have the pleasure of getting you familiar with the Retrospec Valen Rev Plus. But first, do us a solid and consider liking this video. It's a tiny request that actually goes a long way into helping us grow this channel and making sure we can keep providing these reviews with the most in-depth e-bike reviews that there is on YouTube. So, with that out of the way, let's talk about what we liked most about the Valen Rev Plus. First off, this bike is just fun. And frankly, it got a thumbs up from everyone in our office who hopped on it and took it for a ride. Motobikes have a reputation for having quick acceleration to zip around town or across campus, and here the Valen Rev Plus did not disappoint. The 750 watt motor paired to its cadence sensor activation made this motor stand out for sharp, punchy accelerations that consistently left smiles on our faces. It just has that combination of style, commuter practicality, and essentially it's just a whole lot of fun. Born in 2009 as a budget-friendly bike brand for college students, Retrospec has since grown into a diverse outdoor gear company, yet they still retain that core focus on accessibility and enjoyment that made their original bikes a hit. Another standout on the Valen Rev Plus is comfort. I found the Valen Rev Plus to be extremely comfortable to, on rides thanks to this long, cushy saddle and its 20 by 4 inch off-road tires. But just keep in mind, with the moto or moped style e-bikes, its design is likely to limit comfortable pedaling for extended trips with taller riders, and that's not a ding on the bike, it just comes with the territory with any moped style bike. They serve different purposes, and for that purpose, it did well zipping all over town with that powerful motor and eye-catching looks. A final standout goes to the bike's suspension. While it doesn't have full suspension, the Valen Ref Plus has a double crown front fork with 100 millimeters of travel, and we found it to do a really nice job of eating up road imperfections along our route and even some light off-roading. Okay, with those highlights out of the way, let's do a quick rundown of the remaining specs front to back. So Retrospec fitted this bike to fit riders from five foot flat all the way up to six four. And that sounds like a really generous range, but from what we found in testing, it appears to mostly be true. Now, once you consider the fact that this style of bike was never meant to give like a proper pedal extension like a road bike would give you, then that size is fine. I've already mentioned the motor, but that feeds off the 720 watt hour battery and the electrical system on this bike is UL2849 certified and we're always happy to see that. Now, this bike only comes in one universal size and two colors, matte olive drab like we have here and matte black. And as you can see, I think these colors fit the bike pretty well. The tires on the Valen Rev Plus are CST 20 by four inch wide tires and they have a knobby tread pattern. Bringing those tires to a halt is the Tektro hydraulic disc brakes. The retro spec brakes have 180 millimeter rotors paired to a two piston caliper, which we found to perform pretty well in our testing. The retro spec comes with both front and rear fenders, which during my rides did a great job of keeping water from painting a racing stripe on my back. And the drivetrain on this bike is made by Shimano. It's got a 38 tooth chain ring with an 11 to 34 tooth in the rear. The flat metal pedals, rear mounted kickstand, and LED lighting finish off the overall commuter aspects of the Rev Plus's design. Jumping up in the cockpit, the Rev Plus features a full color LCD display that actually offers great illumination and visibility, even in direct sunlight. And that's something not all displays can say, so it was nice to see, literally. And over on the left is a thumb throttle with a small control box for PAS level adjustments and navigating the menus. Black rubber grips paired to a BMX inspired handlebar design made for a nice moto style riding position. Now the folks over at Retrospec advertised this bike as weighing 72 pounds, but like always we tested our test bike here and that came in at 80.5 pounds, but down to 71.8 if you remove the battery. And finally, when it comes to payload capacity, the Rev Plus can support a total payload of a hefty 350 pounds. 
so you can bring your gear along for the ride. So that wraps up some of my initial thoughts, but now let's jump into the nitty gritty details and talk about our numbers we got during our testing of this Retrospect Balin Rev Plus. Okay, first up is our EBR standardized brake test, where our tester Griffin gets the bike to 20 miles an hour and then applies the brakes to bring the bike to a full stop. We then measure the total stopping distance to get an idea of the bike's braking ability. In order to get consistent accuracy, we'll run the brake test three times and then we come up with the average stopping distance from those three runs. The Retrospect Valen Rev Plus scored a respectable total stopping distance of 20 feet 7 inches, which falls below our current average across all classes of e-bikes at 21 feet 10 inches, which on its own is a really, really good score. In fact, when you look into the data and compare that result against all the moto style e-bikes we've tested, this is the second best overall score across all of them. This combination of Tektro hydraulic disc brakes coupled with 180mm disc rotors and the two-piston caliper is known throughout the industry to provide good, reliable braking in safe distances. Here at EBR, Tektro brakes are one of the most common brake setups we see and we consistently see good results. Additionally, because Retrospec opted for Tektro brakes, this makes finding service for the braking system easy as nearly all bike mechanics are familiar with these brakes. During my time on the Valen Rev Plus, I found the braking to feel really good. There's never a loud noise coming from the brakes. They always provided good stopping power. And if I did lock up a tire, there was no fishtailing. Everything felt dialed in the way you want it. All right, let's shift gears and head over to our testing track where we put the Retrospect Valen Plus through its paces on our speed test. All right, we're out here on the Retrospect Valen Rev Plus, and for the speed test, I'm currently in no pedal assistance, so the motor is off, and I'm going about eight miles an hour. Eight and a half, maybe pushing up on nine there. Yeah, nine miles an hour. So let's go ahead and activate PAS1 and see what we get. And I barely felt it, but I did feel it. And that took us up over 10, 10, 2, 10, 4, 10, 5. Looks like that's gonna be the max. So let's go to level two. That one I definitely felt, and you probably heard. And that's got us up to 13, 8, 14. Looks like 14 is the max, 14, 1. All right, PAS3. And there's that one. And now we're up to 15, 8, 16, even. Let's go to PAS4. That one definitely had a little punch to it. Now we're up over 17.9, 18.1. 1. 18.1 1 looks like about it. So let's go to level five. And that one's more subtle. Now we're gonna take us up to 19 maybe, 18.9. All right, I saw 19 hit. Let's go to PAS six, final one. And this one's got us going 19.7. 19.8, that looks like it's gonna be it. And if I hit that throttle, we quickly hit 20. Yeah, quickly to 20. So that wraps up speed. All right, so for the throttle test, I'm at a dead stop. I'm not gonna use any pedaling. I'm just gonna activate the throttle only and see how long it takes the bike to reach 20 miles an hour here on the Retrospect Valen Rev Plus. On your mark, get set, go. And we're going pretty quick punchy acceleration we're already over 15 and we are now at 20. so as you can see super fast acceleration that's probably one of the quicker times we have on these tested bikes i'll have to go back and check data but nonetheless it's on the quicker end of the spectrum to recap those speeds without any motor help i was pedaling about 8.8 .8 miles an hour activating pas1 i got a slight boost up to 10.5 miles an hour Moving up to PAS3, we saw 14.1. Then in PAS4, the bike got up to 16 miles an hour. And in PAS5, we reached 19 miles an hour. And finally, 19.8 miles an hour in PAS6. A noteworthy point here is the Valen Rev Plus is a top speed of 20 miles an hour. However, with some enthusiastic pedaling, you can pretty quickly blow right by that. As far as the motor assistance feeling goes, as you can probably imagine, it's very punchy and remains true to its moto theme with the soul of a punchy, fast bike. In fact, the essence of the Retrospect Valen Rev Plus's speed capabilities can be summed up in one word, quick. 
Whether it's accelerating, climbing hills, or just cruising around, this bike is all about doing things quickly. The bottom line is that the RetroSpec Valen Rev Plus is designed for speed, quickly transporting you from point A to point B, and in this respect, the bike certainly does its job. Alright, we usually test both high and low PAS levels, but honestly, people buying moped bikes don't typically pedal a lot in general, and they certainly don't do much in class 1, so we just went with a max test this time. In the maximum range test, the bike achieved a total distance of 36.45 miles in a span of 2 hours and 23 minutes, maintaining an average speed of 15.3 miles an hour. So no, it didn't quite reach the advertised range, but you definitely need to keep in mind if we had actually used PAS1, it likely would have been much more in the ballpark of the estimated range. And if we zoom out on that data and compare it, its high PAS test numbers against all other mopeds we've tested, and we see this result places this bike as third place overall against 15 other mopeds, a very solid result. But let's be honest, slower conservative rides aren't how moto-looking e-bikes are typically ridden. With their high throttle usage placing more emphasis on the max power test result, the Valen Rev Plus crushed it. Overall, the 36 mile result was awesome. It's one of the best results we've seen from other mopeds with batteries close to 720 watt hour capacity that this bike has. So we give it good overall marks in terms of range performance. Okay, so when it comes to moped style e-bikes, we hope to see enough torque to knock out a couple of steep hills along your route. But before diving into the specifics, let me give you some context about our hill test. I'm going to pass you off to our dedicated hill tester, Justin, who took the Valen Rev Plus up our hellhole hill test to see how quickly it could climb its third of a mile 12% grade. Simply put, it's a beast of a hill. Okay, at a hellhole with the retrospect Valen, kind of moped, motor style, e-bike throttle only here, and kind of as expected decent amount of output. I'm going 14 miles an hour through this hill, um, down to 12, 11.8. See kind of where it gets down to through this first deep section. Right around 10.9, 10.8 is where it's going to bottom out at. Motor, you can hear. Um, say it's average to slightly above average on the noise level. I'll let you listen to it through this section up this last steep, steep climb. You know, it's got down to about 11 or 12 is all through there. You can definitely, like I said, you can't hear the motor. Um, but overall it has good power, which is what you want out of this moped style. Um, you really do want a motor that just kind of kicks in and gives you the juice. Otherwise, you're not going to have very much fun on those hills. So let's, let's go to the tape and see how I did. All right. Now to the pedal test with the Retrospect Raven. We're going to see how this does. I'm in seventh gear going up here oh, thank you and I mean it is pretty much what I was expecting slash hoping for where it gives me pretty much full juice as soon as you're starting to turn those cranks um, I don't know if you can see my knees popping up or not but the moto style I'd say this is about average you know I definitely don't have the leg extension that I want if I was gonna actually pedal this thing up a hill um, but you don't need it you just kind of casually pedal and it goes. So I got down about 13 through that last hill. Let's see this one. It's 12.1 was the lowest it got through that section. Um, if I want to, I can kind of scoot backwards a little bit more, a little better leg extension, but yeah, it's going to have good results. We'll see if this will challenge some of the other moped style e-bikes once we check the tape but overall tons of power not gonna have any problems climbing hills as you can see the Valen Rev Plus had zero issues when it comes to ascending gnarly slopes throttle time was 1 minute 14 seconds with an average mile per hour of 14.7 PAS result was 1 minute and 13 seconds with a slightly faster average of 14.9 Justin's put more than 160 bikes through their paces on Hellhole, spanning various categories like road bikes, electric mountain bikes, and commuters. Among all these contenders, the RetroSpec secured an impressive 10th place from the throttle test across all the bikes we've tested, and that's a huge win in our book. 
Also, did you notice the time difference between throttle only and pedaling? Just to highlight, pedaling alongside the throttle shaved off only one second. This tells us that while pedaling is an option, the heavy lifting is officially handled by the Valen Rev Plus itself. And basically, the Retrospect Rev Plus just does its job well when it comes to climbing hills, making this an excellent option for those living in areas with lots of elevation changes. Okay, let's get back on the road for a final ride along and we'll talk about how the Retrospec Rev Plus handles both on and off the pavement. This bike is a moto inspired or moped style e-bike. And so your riding position and body position is pretty similar to that you'd expect, well, when riding like a moped or a, or a moto style bike. There's not a lot of adjustability, at least in terms of traditional adjustability on a bike. There's no seat post adjustment. Um, and there's also no handlebar stem adjustment. So in terms of traditional adjustments, there's not gonna be any on this bike, but you can dial in some adjustability for a fit that works better for you. You have an elongated seat here that's pretty typical of a moto style bike, and that allows you to kind of scoot your body weight forward or backwards. And then in addition to that, you can loosen the four bolts on the BMX handlebars, tilting the bar away from yourself or towards yourself. And that allows you to really dial in a position that works best for you for your upper body now when it comes to lower body there's not going to be any adjustability um, for pedal extension you just kind of kind of when you buy one of these you come to terms with the fact that the bike does not have a lot of pedal extension and you're just not going it wasn't designed for that this bike was designed to be used primarily with throttle and not a lot of pedaling and so in that regard the pedal extension is going to be consistent with that now there is suspension on the bike there is a double crowned fork that has a lockout feature as well as oh let me get around them real quick you're okay i'll go around you all right so there is suspension on the bike you have a double crowned fork with a lockout feature as well as a compression dial and 100 meters of travel um, during my riding with the bike this fork does a really good job it's unbranded so i can't speak to longevity but as far as feel and eating up road bumps it does a nice job uh, there's no suspension in the rear but you do have a little bit more help with the larger four inch cst tires down below they do have an off-road tread pattern so they're not something that's going to be super quiet i do hear them even when i'm humming down the path but that's to be expected when you take an off-road tire and put it on a paved path the motor on this is 750 watts and it's cadence sensor activated and i'll go ahead and kick on a higher level pedal assist so you can hear how quickly it kicks on i'll start pedaling right now boom so less than a half a turn and as you can see we are quickly off to the races um, i don't know if you can hear the laughing in my voice but this bike just makes me smile when i ride it it's just fun it's punchy quick and i've really enjoyed just cruising around town with it so this bike overall super fun bike really lives up to its theme and look of a moto or a moped style e-bike and it's one of those bikes you could just cruise around town all day um yeah definitely a fan and so we'll head back inside and wrap this up so we made it clear you can expect a grinning good time on the Valen Rev Plus thanks to its speed and performance so far. But is there any downside? Well, kind of. You see, one thing you'll need to accept with e-mopeds is the limited pedal extension. As with many similar bikes, the Valen Rev Plus sits low and lacks adjustable seat posts, so taller riders are less likely to get a full leg extension for efficient pedaling. But overall, we were happy to note that the Valen Rev Plus excels in comfort. The plush moto seat, the front fork, and those big 20 by 4 inch tires soaked up road imperfection smoothly during our testing. While rear suspension would be a nice bonus, it's not essential for a comfy ride. The 8-speed Shimano Altus drivetrain has practical pedaling ranges thanks to its 38 tooth chainring up front and 11 to 34 tooth cassette in the rear for whatever pedaling you choose to do on this bike. Front and rear LED lights are useful for commuters, but turn signals would be a welcome safety upgrade, especially for downtown riders. Overall, if your heart's set on a bike that's built for leisurely all-day pedal assist rides, you might want to lean towards a road bike or maybe a commuter. But if you're in the market for a fast moped-style e-bike, the Retrospect Rev Plus could be the perfect match for you. 
Okay, so what do we make of all of this? Well, the Retrospect Valen Rev Plus consistently delivered a fast and smile-inducing ride. It's one of those bikes that got us grinning the instant the motor kicked in, and that grin just got wider with every mile. The range surprised us, easily holding its own against even pricier competitors. This meant exploring further and not worrying about a recharge. Of course, there's always room for a few upgrades, like turn signals for increased safety and a slightly taller frame for riders pushing that six foot and beyond. But if you're after that e-moped feeling, zipping around town, relying mostly on throttle power and turning heads in the process, well, we think the Retrospect Valen Ref Plus absolutely nails it. With its great price, solid performance, and city smart charm, the Valen Ref Plus offers serious fun for anyone looking to take their first step into the world of e-mopeds, or for those just wanting a playful yet capable ride. All right, friends, that wraps up our thoughts on this fast and fun e-bike. Let us know down below what you think of the Valen Ref Plus. If you're feeling generous, consider liking this video and subscribing. And until next time, we'll see you out there on the trail.